Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're going to uh, talk about uh, extension cord safety. And I'm kind of an extension cord Nazi around the job site, and uh, anytime I find a cord that's bad, um, I'll take it out of service. You know, I, and cords get abused on job sites. They get run over by forklifts, scissor lifts. The cords get yanked on to pull them out of the receptacles. They get kinked, twisted, bent in and out of the trailer, loaded and unloaded every day. They, they just get abused. And uh, I've got a pretty good cord here. She's a 100 footer. I've already checked the entire length of it. No breaks, no cuts in the insulation. I mean, uh, I mean, picture this. We got a cut in the insulation, maybe a cut in the hot wire, and now all of a sudden it's laying down in a water puddle. And it's just sitting there hot. It doesn't blow the breaker or anything, but it's just sitting there hot. The ground or the uh, the hot wire didn't have a path back to ground because maybe the ground is still good and the insulation is still good on the ground so the, it didn't have a, a path back to blow the breaker but that puddle of water is just sitting there hot somebody comes along and steps in it and all of a sudden we were electrocuting somebody and uh, you know GFIs are supposed to take care of that but on a construction site there's any number of hazards and here's a hazard either someone tore that out with a pair of pliers we got the ground uh, ground pin missing on that one. So this was taken out of service. That was a pretty decent molded plug. It's got an LED in it to tell when we got power. Uh, but still, no ground nonetheless. It's coming out of service. Here's the other end. Now this molded plug pulled out of its insulation. And now we've got wires that are getting kinked and uh, messed up right in here. Uh, that ground showing signs of wear. And I'm seeing through to a little bit of hot wire in there. So that's uh, pretty much no bueno there. So now we got two ends of a decent molded plug that have uh, gone south on us. So these are these are ready to get replaced. There's nothing wrong with a cord. I mean, I'm happy with the cord. It, it rolls up, stores good. So we want to get it back in service. So we're going to get the bolt-on ends. Doesn't pay to buy cheap ones. Now this is a uh, these are made by Pass and Seymour, also known as Legrand. Uh, there's a small green board in there with a digital analyzer and what it's going to do is analyzes your circuit and uh, here's what you got on the back of the card you've got a, a green and red LED uh, green means go obviously um, when you have a green condition it, it, it verifies polarity between the uh, um, the hot and the neutral and it verifies that there's a ground there if there's a red condition either you're missing a ground or uh, you have reverse polarity, one of the two. So two conditions can cause a uh, um, a red light. Now, the, I mean, this the male plug lights up. It's got the red and green, but we also got the female. And this is a little redundant having both of these on uh, on an extension cord. But I thought I'd show you that both are available. Let me plug this into a receptacle real quick. Now I've just got the male end over there. I'm going to try to get you over to so you can see that green light. So there we got a green light right here on the plug. And uh, maybe we'll put it on the cord and wire it backwards. And let you, let you see, what a, uh, see what a red light is on the other end. All right. So let's, uh, let's get to... Uh, Let's get to wiring this thing. These, I mean, cords are pretty easy. I don't know everyone's uh, at one time or another putting you in on one of their cords, but uh, there's ways to go about it. You need three tools. You need a razor knife, a pair of strippers, and a number two Phillips. That's all you need. So let's get some uh, let's get some ends on this thing. Okay. Well, let's start with the female end here, the one with the. Uh, where we've got the bad uh, insulation, where the insulation is pulled away from the mold. And we're just going to lob it off. See you later, bye. That can go in the trash. That's done for. Um, and all we're going to do is take our razor knife. We're only going to split about an inch or so out of this insulation. And we're just going to make a longitudinal cut. Which is no fun to do without getting into the wires. So we'll try to get, get that there. And then we're just going to peel away. Get your fingernail in there and just peel away that insulation and just expose our cord and we're going to 
peel that off to the side and just run around uh, the circumference of the of the insulation there with my dull razor knife. There's nothing more dangerous than a dull razor knife, I tell you. It's pretty tough insulation too. All right, that's what we ended up with. Not a heck of a lot. Now, uh, on the back side of, the, of your uh, of your plug, uh, you need to pull the body out, which is right here. We pull the body out, and from inside you can catch some inklings right in here of the green board. You can see the green board there and there. And uh, these things are surprisingly robust because extension cords get dropped a lot. You know, you unplug something and then you have to see guys just drop them to the floor. But I've seen these take some pretty good hits and they don't, uh, the electronics inside live um, without, I mean, unless the outer case gets physically damaged. But uh, here's your backside and this has got a built-in strain relief right here. And there's a, a little removable piece in there. If you're running a, a very small cord or a small gauge cord, uh, you need to leave that piece in, but otherwise pull it out for your larger cords. There's a little rubber boot in there. And here's a tip. Make sure that this goes on before you do your wiring. Duh. Uh, but uh, I, I've seen a million times. You get your wiring all done, then you go, oh man, I forgot to put that on. And another thing is don't strip your wires before you get this on because you'll tangle them up really good. And just get it started in that rubber boot down inside. And just kind of give it a spin as it's going on. And you won't, that way you won't derail that little rubber grommet inside. Okay, we've got our strain relief on, pull back out of the way. Now you can strip your wires. If your wires are stripped, trying to get them through that rubber boot, uh, it will play havoc on you. And uh, we've got three terminals here within the unit. Uh, green in the center, gold and, and silver. Gold is your uh, hot lead, goes to black, green is ground, white is neutral. Pretty darn simple. So let's get our strip on here. And we're not stripping a big bunch off, just enough to get down in those terminals. We're not, we're, when you strip, don't wring the wire, because these are these individual strands are very tiny. Just uh, go down, cut the insulation, back off, and slide your, uh, the jacket off. That way you don't wring the outer uh, wires off of there. And now we're gonna get these kind of arranged, kind of a trident looking thing. Get them twisted where we can insert <clears throat> all three at once. And let's see where we're at here. All right, so we got green, black, and white, all in this, all in the correct position where we can get them all in at the same time. Just do a final positioning here where they'll drop into the terminals. And we're just going to insert all three at once. All three down like that. And I've got very little lead sticking out. I'm going to be clamping way back here with that uh, strain relief. We're just going to hold the whole thing in our hand like this and tighten uh, three number two Phillips. There's hot. There's ground. And I can't tell you how many times I've stabbed myself in the palm with a number two Phillips from doing this. And go back and double check all your connections. Give them a tug, and that's what you should see in there. Insulation completely in the sockets, and no signs of any bare wires even close to outside. All right, now it's time to clock our, uh, our strain relief. And they've got a little tattletale on there somewhere. There it is, I believe. All right. And then these are kind of a speed... Uh, auger thing they got a real coarsely wound thread so they, they tighten down quick and on the back side you want to kind of center up your strain relief and 
Tighten that up. All right, so that's the female side. We're going to repeat it on the male side, but before we do, all right, we've got a good bite on there. No worries about that getting yanked out of our connections. Um, before we put the other end on, remember here we got a bad uh, we got a bad ground at this end. So let's take a look at that red light, and I'm just going to plug this in right over here. And there's your red light there, and there. Kind of hoping that shows up. Let me turn the lights off. It doesn't look like it's even showing up on the camera. We shut the lights down in the shop and we'll take a look at it again. Okay, it's a little darker, not much darker. I got some natural light coming in. But there's your red. Yeah, you can see it. There it is, glowing on my against my hand. All right, so uh, I'm going to repeat the process on the uh, on the male end of this cord, and then we're going to uh, check for a green condition. Uh, I'm not going to film that; it's identical to what I just did here. So uh, let's get that male end on and uh, bring it back. Okay, well we've got our male end on now, and uh, we've gotten rid of uh, the missing ground pin on the, ma the old male end, and we got rid of the bad uh, insulation on the female end. So these things can go in the trash. And that's too bad, those are a nicely molded plug, nice and big, got a nice cushion on them when, when they you know, get thrown around. So uh, anyways, we've got uh, two ends here, both replaced, both with the circuit analyzers, which is interesting. And now we should have a green light. Let me get plugged in here. And there we go. The light is green. The trap is clean. So it's got, a, it's got an LED on each side. Easily spotted. Uh, I don't think it's showing up too good on camera. But it... Uh, there it is. Um, it's easily spotted on a job site. And it uh, enables my cord Nazism. You know, I can walk around a job site and look at all the green lights everywhere and I know every, everybody's good and everybody's safe. You can tell at a glance whether your cord has uh, got an issue or not or maybe the circuit's got an issue. This will tell you if you're if you're missing a ground in the receptacle on the wall it's gonna come out red. If it's if it's reverse if you've got a receptacle that's reverse polarity it'll show up red. So it lets you know that a problem exists. Alright guys I uh, hope you enjoyed this little segment on uh, extension cord safety and bringing one back into service. Uh, thanks for watching, you guys.